Welcome back. This is the third in our series, Christian Power uh, 201. Uh, we've been looking at the book of Romans from the Apostle Paul. He starts off in the book of Romans in the first two chapters saying that we can all know there's a God just by seeing how finely tuned this universe works. Uh, but we ignore him, reject him, and so our lives turn into a mess and the world gets worse. He says we can all know there's a God by the fact that we all naturally judge people, signaling that we know the difference between right and wrong. How else would we be able to judge somebody? But we don't obey the very things we know that are right, and so we make a mess of our lives in the world. Then in Romans 3, 4, and 5, he talks about the good news of uh, the gift of God, grace through Christ's death on the cross that we can receive by faith. And he, he says, Romans 5, 1, now we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then in chapter 6, he moves on to where this series is going, or Christian Power 201, and he talks about what we have in Christ. Romans 6, verse 4, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. So he's talking about the great things we have in Christ. And then in verse 7, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. So Romans 6 talks about the great victory we can have through Christ uh, over sin. Then in chapter 7, uh, Apostle Paul surprises us with a self-portrait that's very dark. And uh, uh, it, it, so let me read uh, verse 19. I should have said, open your Bibles uh, if you want to be following along with me, so I'm not just reading alone. So I'm going to read now from Romans 7, uh, 19. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. You've probably had that experience. You want to do good, but you don't. And that's what Paul describes of himself. What a wretched man I am, verse 24. Who will rescue me from this body? that is subject to death. Then his answer, thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then in chapter 8, which is what we're going to consider today, uh, Paul uh, uh, talks about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is really the answer. So in Romans 7, he's talking about what it's like to try to live as a Christian without the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not pretty. It, it's a wretched man. We don't do what we want to do on our own power. Just like we can't save ourselves on our own power, we can't sanctify ourselves on our own power. So Romans 8, he talks to us about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is mentioned in Romans 7 only one time. In Romans 8, 1 to 27, he's mentioned 19 times. I have a question for you. Why don't you ask this to, with your partner or people in your group. How much do you know about the Holy Spirit? How much do you feel you've been taught about the Holy Spirit? This isn't a long answer, just give a quick answer. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is, is the whole subject of Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 27. Apostle Paul says in Romans 8, verse 9, if you want to read with me, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. So if you've given your life to Christ, put your faith in Him, the Holy Spirit has come and resides in you. Uh, some people would say you give your life to Christ and then there's a second step, you receive the Holy Spirit. Paul says no, the Holy Spirit is part of the package of giving your life to Christ. Maybe the reason the Holy Spirit is the least talked about member of the Trinity. We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Is because the Holy Spirit's whole role is to give glory to Christ, convict people of sin and, and bring them to faith in Christ and to bring glory to the Father. So it's very self-effacing. And so there's not a lot of pointing to the Holy Spirit in the Bible. Uh, but he gives us a, a, a power. Verse, let's see, verse 11 uh, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life 
to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Uh, one of the verses uh, I memorized this summer was from our study this summer that uh, Pastor Chris led, uh, 2 Peter 1, 3 to 4. By the way, there's a memory verse in every lesson in the journal. Uh, don't skip over those. I think the most meaningful thing I do each week is memorize that verse. Uh, it gets me thinking about it, what it means, and I can begin to live it out as I'm going about my day, driving, wherever I am. Uh, Peter says in 2 Peter 1, 3 to 4, God's divine power, that would be the Holy Spirit, gives us all that we need for life and godliness, according to our knowledge of Him, who has called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, He has also given us great and precious promises so that we may participate in the divine nature, that's the Holy Spirit, and escape the corruption of the world caused by by evil desires. Uh, the, the second thing we find in Romans 8 that the Holy Spirit gives us is security. Verse 15, the spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Uh, the Holy Spirit inside us assures us that we really are Christians. We've received Christ. He's really in us. We're children of God. And then the last thing I notice in this chapter is the Holy Spirit gives us strength. Verse 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Uh, Paul surprises us again by talking about suffering, and he says it's not worth comparing our sufferings with the glory that we'll receive uh, someday with Christ. Um, so my question to you to, to talk in your group is, how has the Holy Spirit given you strength to handle the sufferings in your life, the difficult times, uh, the tough times? Why don't you talk about that for a few minutes, then go about your, your study, uh, look through the journal, uh, uh, pray together. Hope you have a great time. Thanks. Thanks.